Introducing Maxima's SC1 High Gloss Protectant, the secret weapon of professional factory race team mechanics. Maxima's SC1 is the most requested product for a reason. SC1 works wonders on plastics, rubber, carbon fiber, and more. Its water-resistant properties keep mud, dirt, and dust from adhering. It's as simple as spray-on use, giving your machine a glossy finish. SC1, known as a new bike in a can, restores your ride to a sleek, factory-fresh look. And let's not forget the unforgettable new bike smell that will make your garage feel like an AMA Supercross Pits. Available in 4-ounce or 12-ounce aerosol cans, SC1 is ready to protect your ride. Maxima's SC1 High Gloss Protectant, unbeatable shine, water-resistant protection, new bike in a can. Mark Tilly, and I'm here with Ron Lawson. We're out here at Glen Helen right before the Fast House Day in the Dirt doing our 2024 450 MX Shootout. The 450 Shootout is always a very big deal for us. This year is special because we have a wild card in the mix. The 2024 Kawasaki KX450 is all new this year. It was the winner last year, so we want to know how it stacks up with the others. The Gas Gas is also new for this year, while the Yamaha the Honda, the KTM, and the Husqvarna all got major revamps last year. We've got a lot of testing to do, so we're going to get to it right now. First, let's talk about the Gas Gas MC 450F. As we mentioned, it's a new bike this year, but it was no surprise. It now has the same frame and motor that the KTM and Husqvarna got last year. The bodywork is different, of course, and so are a number of components. Gas Gas has softer suspension settings than the other Austrian bikes. It has a forged triple clamp, brake tech brakes and hydraulics, Maxxis tires, and different bars and rims. It also comes without a map switch or resonance chamber in the headpipe. Accordingly, it sells for a little less than the other Austrian bikes at $10,399. Here are the strongest points for the Gas Gas. It has a great motor. It has excellent low end, it revs out well, and it's very controllable, especially considering how fast it is. It's the lightest bike in the whole shootout. On our scale, it comes in at 228 pounds without fuel. Not surprisingly, it handles like a very light bike. It turns with very little effort and has no real issues in the stability department. The suspension is definitely cushy on the Gas Gas. It uses the same WP shock and air fork as the KTM, but the valving is softer and is more in line with intermediate level riders. The controls are all excellent. These are the best Brake Tech brakes we've tested yet. We understand that Brake Tech was recently purchased by Brembo, and there's a distinct improvement in quality. As far as weak points, there are only a few areas to complain about on the Gas Gas. More advanced riders will use up the suspension fairly quickly. Setup is difficult because the frame is very rigid, so if you simply increase compression damping, the feeling of harshness only increases. The Gas Gas gives up ground in tires as well. We like the durability of the Max tires, but they can be a handicap on hard terrain. We certainly appreciate that Gas Gas is trying to keep the price down, but it's still very expensive, and you'll probably want to buy the map switch after the fact. That's another $135. <laughs>
Moving on to the Honda CRF 450R. This bike is unchanged for 2024, but it got a new frame and a very different personality last year. The previous bike was a brute. It made so much power that most of the changes in 2023 were aimed at making it more controllable. Interestingly enough, you can still buy the earlier version of the Honda. It's called the CRF 450RS and sells for $88.99. The current one is $96.99. There are three maps available through a handlebar switch as well as traction control. The suspension is Showa, and the brakes and hydraulic clutch are both Nissan. Tops on the list of strong points for the Honda is its low end power. Below 7,500 RPM, it positively crushes everything else. Throttle response is immediate and crisp. It also has very quick responsive steering. The Honda handles life, actually, it falls right in the middle as far as real weight goes. It's 233 pounds without fuel on our scale. The Honda is a comfortable bike. The layout is roomy, the seat is not too soft, not too hard, and the controls are all good, including the map switch. The weakest point on the Honda is its frame rigidity. It has the stiffest feel of all, and that makes suspension setup even more difficult. Light riders might not be able to take off enough spring preload in the rear to get the recommended 105 millimeters of race sag. We also feel the power drops off too dramatically on top. Realistically, we can't complain that any of these bikes is lacking in power, but the Honda goes from being the strongest bike at low revs to being one of the weakest on top. The transition is a little sudden and forces you to shift maybe before you're ready. Now the Husqvarna FC450. That bike uses the same frame and motor as the KTM and Gas Gas, but there are a number of differences that give it a separate identity, starting with less seat height. That's because the suspension travel is slightly reduced on the FC450. The Husky uses Brembo brakes and hydraulics. It has DID Dirt Star rims, a Pro Taper handlebar, and a composite airbox subframe structure. The FC450 has the highest price of any bike in the shootout. The MSRP is $11,199. The Husky's strongest point, just like the other Austrian bikes, is its motor. It's very fast and still controllable. The FC450 might actually have the best manners of the three because of its smooth mid-range. The quick shift feature is useful for most riders, but for the others, it can be turned off easily. The reduced seat height has no real downside. Everyone likes being able to touch the ground more easily, especially on the start line. Overall handling is excellent, it turns well, and remains level on acceleration. It's very light, only one pound heavier than the Gas Gas at 229 pounds without fuel. We love the clutch, we love the brakes, we love the grips, we love the bars. As far as weak points, the chassis is very super cross oriented. That means it's stiff and puts too much burden on perfect suspension setup. The WP suspension can't really be called a weak point, but it can't adequately compensate for the chassis rigidity. You can get it right, but be prepared to do a lot of testing. There's a lot to talk about with the new Kawasaki KX450, so you'll want to check out our separate test of that bike. Everything is new. But to go over some of the major details briefly, the motor has a center port exhaust, the front brake is a Brembo, and the rear brake is a redesigned Nissan. Kawasaki paid a great deal of attention to the electronics package. It has a handlebar switch with mild and aggressive maps available on the fly, plus traction control. Kawasaki now offers the Rideology smartphone app for engine tuning, very much like Yamaha's power tuner. The price for the new KX450 is now $10,399. The strongest part of the Kawasaki is that they didn't mess it up. It was probably tempting for them to pump up the motor and go after peak power. Controllability is a much more important feature for us and Kawasaki scores well there. The motor is super easy to use. It builds power and then tapers off in a smooth, controllable fashion. The chassis is very compliant. 
Kawasaki doesn't beat you up. The suspension gets equal credit. It's a comfortable bike at any speed. This year, the steering is faster and more responsive, but still, the KX is the most stable bike at speed. The brakes are strong, the clutch pull is easy, and the controls are excellent. Even the grips, which are now ODI lock-ons. On the list of weak points, we should probably include its soft motor output because the Kawasaki still gives up horsepower to the Yamaha and all the Austrian bikes. You can get a little more snap with the Rideology app, but not enough to out-drag those other bikes in a straight line. Kawasaki gained weight this year. At 239 pounds without fuel, it's over 10 pounds heavier than the lightest bike of the shootout and tied as the heaviest. <laughs> is the big brother to Gas Gas and Husqvarna, so it's easy to think they're all the same. But the differences are worth talking about. The KTM has a different airbox, and that gives the motor a different feel. The suspension setup is different, so is the handlebar, the bodywork, and the rims. Still, the most important parts are the motor and the frame, so many of the KTM's strengths and weaknesses will sound familiar. The bike's biggest strength, as you might expect by now, is the motor. It's not a monster, but it's still very powerful. On the dyno, the KTM produces the highest peak power of them all, even if it only beats its Austrian siblings by a few tenths. The difference is still noticeable on the track. Cornering is another strong part that the KTM shares with the Husky in the gas gas. It drops into turns easily, has very light steering. On the scale, the KTM is the same as the Husky at 229 pounds without fuel. Most riders say the KTM is the best overall suspension of the Austrian bikes. It rides higher in its travel than the Gas Gas and has a little more travel than the Husky. Riders might also be feeling different flex characteristics from the subframe. We still feel that the rigidity of the frame is the KTM's most significant weak point. On some tracks, stiffness is an asset, but without super cross whoops or massive jumps, it just makes for a harsh ride. Roxon single-handedly gave renewed life to the Suzuki RMZ450 last year. He found out what we have known for a long time. The Suzuki has a lot of great points and is a worthwhile consideration despite being a product of an earlier time. Our test bike is the RM Army Edition, which is still available through some dealers. It has a Yoshimura exhaust and special graphics. The 2024 RMZ450 also comes with an EFI tuning tool manufactured by Get Athena. It's still the most affordable bike in the comparison at $9,199. The top item on the Suzuki's list of overall strong points is still its handling. It turns easily without being nervous or hyper. It's actually very stable. We know from experience that the Suzuki chassis is very compliant. It was designed long before the current movement towards more super cross oriented traits and increased rigidity. Obviously, it works pretty well at the highest level too. You can just ask Kenny. The RMZ450 is also very comfortable. The ergos are spread out and virtually everyone feels at home immediately. Some people might say the most significant weak point is the Kickstarter, but that's no big deal for us. Our biggest complaint is the stiff rear suspension. We know how to fix it, but so does Suzuki. We just wish they would do it. Okay, we will complain about the Kickstarter, but only because the bike weighs so much it should have electric start. It's 239 pounds without fuel. The bike also has a cable clutch, which is no crime in itself, but it does fade quickly.
YZ450F was last year's wonder bike and still impresses us as much as ever. Everything was new, the frame, the motor, the bodywork, everything. Now the 2024 model is unchanged, but we are always discovering new personalities because of the Yamaha Power Tuner smartphone app. That allows you to cook up your own power delivery and change the bike dramatically. The YZ450F you see in this video is the 50th anniversary edition. It sells for $10,199, which is $200 more than the standard version, but there are no mechanical differences. First of all, the YZ feels like it has the most power. That's because it climbs very steeply in the middle of the power band, and that makes for a very thrilling ride. If the standard power delivery is a little too much, it's easy to modify. There are a zillion maps available, and you will like one of them. The power tuner is a great tool. A traditional strong point for Yamaha has always been suspension. This one is no different. The rougher the track and the faster the pace, the better the YZ450 works. And finally, ergonomics are a strong point. This is new. Instead of being cramped up, the Yamaha is now spread out and comfortable. It's also much lighter and much more agile than the YZs of the old days. The 2024 version is the lightest of the Japanese 450s at 231 pounds. On the negative side, all that power in the standard configuration can be a handful. It's actually hard to keep the front end down. That combines with very responsive steering to make things happen very quickly. You have to keep up with the Yamaha. For many riders, mastering the Power Tuner app is going to be a necessity simply to make the bike more controllable. Riders also have to deal with a great deal of intake noise. It isn't just the sound of suction through the air filter, there's also popping, backfiring, and engine noise that can be distracting. <laughs>
we back off and look at the big picture, we have much the same choice as last year. It's a Kawasaki versus Yamaha showdown. Yamaha has power and suspension. The Kawasaki has manageability and handling. Last year, we chose the Kawasaki by the slimmest of margins. So the new KX would actually have to be a step backward if it were to lose against the unchanged Yamaha. But in no uncertain terms, we have to say the new KX is not a step backwards. In sheer performance, it might be a lateral move. No better, no worse. But in technology and potential, it is a big step forward. As far as the others go, we once again see the Husqvarna and KTM taking the next two positions, followed by the Gas Gas, Honda, and Suzuki. It's a very tightly grouped bunch of motorcycles again. For more on the 2024 450 motocross bikes, you can check out the February 2024 print edition of Dirt Bike or go to dirtbikemagazine.com. You can also check out some of our other motocross videos. And as always, look us up on social media. Thanks for watching.